All right, all right. I've said this once, and I'll say it again. Dude, Riptide sucks this year. What are you talking about? It's the best thing to ever happen to the school. All right, all right. Let's make a deal then. Uh, if I win, we cancel Riptide. And if you win, I, I don't know. I'll embarrass myself on Riptide. Okay. Hey, you got a deal. All right, deal. Now, if only we had a basketball, I mean, that'd be great. Wow, how convenient. Now, if only we had a hoop. Wow, a hoop. Maybe we can play now. Maybe. First one to one. All right, let's do it. All right, so the first point to one wins. All right. You know what they call me? They ain't got no game. You know what they call me? They ain't got a J. They call me the White Mamba. <laughs> <laughs> I missed. Why did I miss? No, I usually don't miss. Whoa. Well, do it again. On. I was looking at the camera. What are you gonna do? 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 <laughs> I'm gonna shot. Let me give you the truth. The triple thread backspin, one, two, three, four, five times X pass. Watch. Yeah. Uh, I missed again. How did I miss? You gotta catch me like he missed the ball. Where'd the ball go? Where'd the ball go? Oh, it's here. <laughs> This is Riptide's house. You lost the bet. Time to embarrass yourself on Buck TV. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. Good afternoon, Bucks. Today is Friday, November 22nd. I'm Brittany. And I'm Jake, and you're watching Riptide. Yesterday, our very own culinary students made all the teachers and staff Thanksgiving lunch. Let's go to the story on the Buck Bistro. Today, teachers and staff enjoyed a luncheon in the drama room hosted by the culinary program. Culinary students provided a large assortment of food and drinks. Well, Buck Bistro, my culinary arts students, made a ton of different items. We made a signature mocktail. We also made some side items that you typically have at home, like uh, green beans, mashed potatoes with gravy, we made stuffing, we had our roasted turkey, um, cranberry jelly, cornbread, and a ton of desserts. We had Miss uh, Kramer make us flan, and we also had sweet potato pie and pumpkin cheesecake bars, and that's it. All levels helped, so culinary levels one, two, three, and four all had some part in this huge project, and I selected servers from levels three and four, and they all did awesome. They just keep getting better and better. Dr. Larry Feldman, our school board member, also attended the event. It is absolutely fantastic because not just the kids which make the flavor here, but the food. The culinary arts program is outstanding. I love it. It's better than the food we get at the school board building. Um, and what is my favorite? What favorite was the little cheese squares, you know, like cheesecake squares with the graham cracker. That was amazing. But for them, turkey was great and the potatoes and the stuffing. Having for these types of functions, you really have to mentally be prepared because there's so much that's going on. There's like, you have to prepare the food and before you prepare any food, there's like a mise en place. I think that's all the gatherings of the food, measurements, all that stuff. And you have to worry about arrangements, the table arrangements, tables, the amount of people you're having, if you're gonna have enough food. and. Even when we're like in the middle of something, we have to keep going back and forth because yeah, you're running out of food, you're running out of water, and you're running about all the stuff. So you have to keep going like back and forth, and it's pretty stressful. It's very stressful because it's a lot of running back and forth, and you got to make sure you have the grocery list correct, and it's a lot of math to make sure you have all the multiplying and of all the people and stuff. The annual culinary luncheon has once again proved to be a great success. I'm Sam reporting for Riptide. This past weekend, Dr. Cespedes had a seminar at FIU. Many of his students attended this session. Let's go to Veronica for a recap. Hi, we're here at FIU with one of our own teachers, Dr. Cespedes, at a special tutoring for our history students. Let's see what's going on.
was hosted by the Jack D. Gordon Institute for Citizenship Studies and Public Policy at Florida International University. It's intended to help uh, anyone interested in contemporary history and, and public policy. As the students arrive, they are preparing themselves for an exciting adventure on the subject of contemporary history. This event was really helpful um, as far as uh, my history class goes. I really learned a lot from Dr. Cespedes and um, it was just a great event overall. Uh, we learned a lot about the, uh, the Soviets during World War II. That was the main focus. And, um, and the transition into the Cold War. Um, a lot of facts that I hadn't known before that, that I re I'm really glad that I learned from this event. I didn't really come here to learn. I really came here to review to better myself in the IB exams. Like this event really helped me out for my AP test because even though it's um, communi communism during the 1900s and like we're still in the 1700s, I believe like like my knowledge will already be um, intact thanks to this event. So I'll be ready for the AP test. Thank you. It was, it was really great to just kind of review stuff that we've already gone over in the beginning of the year because we've already gone into other topics. So to just go over the Soviets and the um, communism and stuff like that, it was just, it was really great. And it was actually really great to see Dr. Cespedes in a other classroom than in our classroom at South Dade. Well, we do this event because often older history is covered. You know, the Civil War is covered and so forth. But we wanted to be able to tell to students about contemporary history. And that's why I teach a course called 20th Century and Contemporary Issues at Florida International University. Well, this was a great event for both the juniors and the seniors in preparation for the exam. Hopefully they do great on their tests. For Riptide, I'm Veronica Franco. We talked to some of the dancers to see how the dance show went. Let's go to a recap. Last week was the fall dance show performance. It was the first of the year and a great success. Ms. Diaz and some of her dancers talked to us about their experience. I thought it went really well. We had a great audience. The kids did awesome. They worked really hard and they performed and they did a great job. Honestly, I feel like I've really improved because my freshman year I was in level three and then now I'm in level four and the whole like year and a half that I've been in it, I feel like I can do more than I, I've ever been able to do before. I'm so proud of my team. Like. If I could choose any school, I would go to South Dade because we have such a strong relationship on our team. This year at the dance show, I was definitely less nervous because there's always nerves, but once you get on stage, it's just adrenaline and excitement. And to improve on my dancing, I just want to get better with my technique and stage presence. As a first time elective dancer, I think I did overall really good. I think the dance elective class did really good as, um, as a first performance for many of them because many of them, this was actually a first time performing for them and I think they did really outstanding. And I feel like they have the ability to do more than one choreography in the dance show. But like overall, I'm really proud of the elective dancers, just as proud of them as I am of the level four dancers. Well, all the levels did wonderful. They were clean, they performed to the best of their ability. Uh, level 4 is preparing right now for their regional and state competition, so it gave them the opportunity to rehearse some of their routines. The show was a bittersweet moment for the seniors. I feel this year the dance show went really well. We were really prepared and we pulled it together all and we really worked as a team and we just were one big happy family so it's easy to get stuff done and to just be prepared for the show and actually I just auditioned for Florida State. Their dance major is like one of the top four in the nation. Um, I think that we did really well this year. We all pulled it together at the end and we were really prepared. Um, I'm really proud of those girls. They mean a lot to me. Um, we work really hard in that dance room and we become like a little family and I'm definitely going to miss them next year. I'm extremely proud of the girls and Marquise boy who have come to become my family. They, uh, God. dancing every day with them has just been an honor and a pleasure to become this close with them. I'm really happy to be spending my last year with them. I love my family. They're like a second home to me. I'm really sad to be leaving them, but I'm happy to be moving on with my life. Although dance will not be a part of my life, I have learned several things from it that will benefit my life. And 
I know that I'm very proud of them and they will work hard without us. I love my seniors and they're awesome. If you're interested in watching the entire dance show, you can buy a CD from Miss Diaz. With Riptide, I'm Ruel. The new PS4 just came out this past week. Let's go to Alex for a review. Hey Bucks, it's Friday, and a week ago from today, we had the grand launch of the PS4, and I had the honor to review it. I'm Alex Rataya, and this is Tech Talk. With also mass innovations from the DualShock 4 to the UI system to the sleek design, you can see that Sony spent no expense to make this a true next-gen system. As we all know, the PS4 was a mass improvement from the predecessor of the PS3, and it continues to impress me with stunning visuals and an all-around fun experience. So, I would also like to get into the new thing, which everybody's been talking about, the DualShock 4. What I have here is the DualShock 3 and the DualShock 4, and if you notice, the DualShock 4 is slightly wider. This was done for comfort purposes. Many people believe the DualShock 3 was slightly smaller and more cramped. I never had this personal issue, but it doesn't deter that the DualShock 4 is a much better improvement. The analog sticks are slightly indented and have a sort of a grip that helps the thumb stay on. Uh, with the PS3, I've had an issue with this, um, but with the PS4, I feel like it's much more tacked on and it, I don't have an issue. Um, everything feels more responsive on the PS4, even the buttons, not just in-game, but outside as well. The uh, clicking is a good aesthetic to it. Um, now the touchpad. Uh, I haven't found the trigger has kind of like a sloop, like 360 or molt, and you'll be using these for first-person shooters a lot more. And I'm pretty happy about it. It was a great improvement. Uh, though I'll miss the L1 and R1. This is a my skills don't feel any more diminished than they are. Uh, The touchpad, I felt like had no innovation other than using it for a map uh, touchpad kind of thing. Uh, for Assassin's Creed, there has been no interesting feature for it yet, but I hope it will continue to be improved. The share buttons, um, you are able to uh, record gameplay, and I have a, I have a couple right here. Um, also do live streams for Ustream and Twitch, and I find the, uh, uh, the uh, um, system feature... Uh, very useful, but I wish that it had more of an editing system to appeal to Let's Players. I hope they really uh, work on that. Overall, the PS4 is a great console with little to no problems upon release with great games like Battlefield 4, Cod Ghosts, Assassin's Creed 4, and you have no little money uh, free to play games like Warframe. Uh, overall, I give this console a 9 out of 10 uh, upon release. Hey, you know those girly memes you always see on Vine? Yeah, I've seen a couple. Well, we've made some of our own. Let's check it out. South Day is perfect creation, like to? now available for purchase. Fresher than your local market and a lot healthier too. Know where you're eating and get healthy. Support your local FFA. To purchase, go to Coach Greer's room at 4115 or email him. Supplies are limited, so hurry. <laughs> South Day played Southwest last week for the first round of playoffs. They defeated Southwest 42-7. 
Let's go to Lewis with the recap. The football team played in the first playoff game against Southwest Eagles. After a long kick return by the Eagles, South Dade quickly took the momentum for the rest of the game after this interception by Derek Nottage. The game was not close at all as the Bucks scored and scored. Scored and scored again until there was a final score of 42 to 7. Big news came out of the game as South Dade receiver Tyree Brady committed to UM earlier that day. Oh yeah, you know UM it always been a school of my dream ever since I was little. I remember telling my grandma, my granddaddy, my mom, my whole family that I, when I was little I wanted to go to UM. Now the opportunity came um, and I committed today and it was a dream come true. The game really set the tone for their next playoff game against Killian. Outstanding. I mean, he's been consistent all year, uh, answering the bell. I thought the offensive line did a great job blocking, giving us that protection. Our uh, running backs ran good. Uh, just combined, you know, everybody put in a, a load of work. Oh, um, you know, all of us, we've been putting in work ever since summer, during practice, and even um, getting some extra work in after practice, and just showing right now. This playoff game will help the football team as they try to beat Killian tonight with vengeance as they are their only defeat in the regular season. For Riptide, I'm Luis Gonzalez. Tomorrow at 1, the Bucks play Killian in the second round of playoffs. We spoke to some of the players about the game. Let's check it out. Last year, Bucks had to face Killian in the region semifinals and suffered a horrible loss which knocked them out. This season, they faced Killian during regular season once again, taking the district title from our Buccaneers. They now face Killian in region semifinals for the second time. Revenge plays a major role in the game this Friday. Mostly Killian in the past two years, they were never a rivalry game and they just turned into a rivalry game after they beat us, after we took their undefeated streak and then they came back and beat us in the playoffs in the second round. It was just sad seeing all that and then out from there it just turned into business into this year. How we were undefeated for 7-0 and and they come and beat us and they beat us by a touchdown which was barely a, mar a mar very small margin which is just very sad to see how it could have been perfect, but nothing's really perfect until they beat us. So now it's, now it's again that we go up against them one more time, see who, who's really the best, but I think that we're the best, and it's just they're the best team's going to come out on top, and that's just how it's going to be. We're going to come out on top Friday, huh? If we beat Killian today, it'll be very good, because losing them the first time, that wasn't supposed to happen. We just made a lot of mistakes. But now, like when we win this game, it showed that what we actually have to offer. Um, it would be a big relief off of our backs, basically. I mean, the first two games, they got the best out of us, and this time we just want to prove everybody wrong that we can beat them. This week, pretty much the team, you know, we've just been focused on really keying in on where our responsibilities are. So, you know, a lot less hitting, you know, a lot more focus, you know, a lot more preparation, going through the motions, you know, making sure everything's right, you know, making sure everybody's where they're supposed to be. And, you know, that's pretty much how we prepare ourselves for this week. Um, just watching a lot of film and a lot of situation drills and practice where uh, we were down last game and where we should have made better choices. We've been going over film and correcting our mistakes. So we've been doing everything, looking at their plays, going through their playbook, defense, watching their special teams, anything to win the game. Um, pride. Um, they stole something from us that we can't get back a district championship, and um, we want to get them back in this second round game. Just uh, both of my brothers that came to South Eight, they all made it to the third round. That's as far as South Eight's ever been. And uh, you know, I grew up always in the shadow, you know, always trying to outplay them and everything. So uh, making it past this game and going further in the playoffs would mean a lot. Our role get anything that's possible to be done block punts, block crap backs, anything. My role in the game basically is um, I'm a power back, so you know when when things get sticky, you know third down, you know third and one, you know I'm pretty much in there, you know making sure I get those tough yards for the team, those tough touchdowns, you know just those real tough runs that you know the the team needs for you know for the you know for success in the game. That's my role in the game. Let's hope tonight our Bucks overcome this newfound rivalry and defeat Killian to continue on their road to states. That feels really great. Something I never had before. I'll tell you when we get there. For Riptide, I'm Brittany Hoskins. Well, that's it for today, Bucks. I'm Brittany. And I'm Jake. Have a wonderful weekend.